Okay, so here's part three where we do have the images that we want. Now, maybe we don't want these particular hues, so uh, at this point we could go also uh, perhaps through the soft contrast improvement or some other color changes. One of the new filters, the uh, Adjust All, which uh, allows you to adjust just about every parameter there, the blue, the red part. You can increase some or decrease others. You can add some of the red, but that will add it all over, including the black parts, the background. Uh, let's make sure we don't do that. Let's see, perhaps we can just change uh, the hue. Let's just bold through the hue values there until we have exactly the colors we want. Um, let's say I like this one here, and a little bit more on the green and on the red. There, so that will be brighter. And we can also add the value. Now what's black already, the background is not going to turn any brighter, that stays black, but the others can go brighter or darker. So those cells now can look a little bit brighter. If I increase the brightness though, that will add it to everything. Right, so um, let's say we want to perhaps increase the contrast, or not, or the gamma. So here's where you can play with a lot of these parameters. You give it just the appearance you want. Alright, let's say this. Let's keep this one and store that again. And it's time now, store image, it's time now to take it into the 3D Designer. So the 3D Designer is one of the new filters in PD Pro 7. And with the Halo Edition or with the Artist Edition. And what we can do is go to the Transform filter right there and the 3D Designer loads that thing in. Now, initially it shows it as a wireframe. We can enable perspective. We can change the amplitude of those elements. The extrusion, the depth of that, depends on how bright the cells were. Remember those cells over here. The brighter they are, the more elevation they have. It's essentially interpreted as an elevation map. And um, we can then also go and turn it into a shaded mode. Now we have a color object that we can change the object color, or we can say no, let's use the image that's in the swap buffer, or even better, let's use the one that's come from the original image. Now this is a very coarse rendition of it, so we can rotate it very quickly around, and then we can also refine it and show it in more detail. So the sample steps here, as we, as we bring the sample steps to minimum, that's when you see a very high definition 3D model come out of that. And you can still change the heading, rotate that a little bit, you can still change the amplitude of that extrusion, so the brighter it is, the higher up they come. And let's see what else we can do, a little bit of a pitch change here. And so we could do something like a view from the side. Oh, we can also go from underneath and kind of see these things as holes that disappear into the grid. Or let's say what else, maybe more of an isometric view or less of a perspective, so the zoom factor will give you that. If you look at it this way, there's less perspective. If you go to the left with the zoom factor, you get a very strong perspective, even a little bit stronger there. Uh, and then you can also look at this, um, the information here. The Z buffer can be stored away if you need that. Uh, I'm not going to need that right now, but you could change the lighting and direction. There's two light sources. You can change the direction from where they come, change the bank. And change, uh, let's say, oh yeah, over here you can uh, change the position in the x axis, so move x, you just click and drag. So you click the y and drag it, and that will make it move up or down. Okay, and then also move into it or away from it. That's the z direction, the z axis. Um, and then there's also the scale, you can scale it along one axis and you can scale it on the other axis. Um, let's see what else. And of course, the depth, the amplitude is this one down here. Uh, let's see, there's also the pitch, we can rotate that a little bit. So there's lots of different things you can do from that point. Uh, one that I like really a lot is actually turn this now into an animation. Perhaps do a little animation like we fly around this. And uh, in order to do that, we want to find sort of a starting angle. Maybe we want this heading and we want to gradually increase it to an, a different angle. Just increasing it maybe one degree per frame. So we'll need a frame, a sequence, a placeholder for that. And we'll do that in the next part. Uh, we'll need to then go to the animate option here. Right now we didn't prepare for the animation so it wouldn't do anything. Um, and therefore what I'll do is I'll just uh, cancel out. Oh, and let's, let's keep this one. And uh, store this. This is a pretty picture as an example. Store this image. And we'll go to the next part to actually turn this little animation.